In Leviticus 19.32, it says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. I am the Lord. So before I start this study, I want to emphasize the importance of respecting older men and women in the faith. And there are older men who I talk to that give me great insights and advice, like my pastor, Donnie Dalton, like other great old pastors like Bob Alexander, David Hoffman, Danny Castle, who have helped me over the years with so many Bible questions and things like that. And I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea with this lesson. This lesson isn't towards this type of group of older guys, not towards all old people in general. This study is directed towards older saints who haven't ran well. Or just older people in general who aren't you haven't used their years in a way that they should have. And in Psalm 90, 9 through 10, it says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. You know, you think about it. Even young people listen to this. You're going to spend your years as a tale that's told. You're going to wake up and be 70, 80 years old one day. And what are you, what are you going to be able to say that you've done with all those years? It says in Psalm 90 and verse 10, the days of our years are three score years and ten. That's 70 years. You know, you. somebody said you make it past 70 years, you're living on borrowed time. It says, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, 80 years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. You know, you, you get up around 70 and 80, you're, he's saying it's, your life's soon cut off. You're you're getting close, and you think about it. You're fifty, and if you're fifty and sixty years old, you're getting closer and closer to seventy years old. Think about that for a minute. What are you doing with your years? This is going to be called. Do those gray hairs mean anything? And this isn't directed toward all old people. This is just directed toward a certain kind of old people. Let's start now. Look at Genesis three twenty-two through 24. It says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So what's going on is Adam and Eve just took off the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So Adam was now a sinner. He's now got sin in his blood. And if he would have taken from the tree of life and ate it, he would have lived forever in his sinful state. Think about that. God knew, God had it fixed to where no matter what, if somebody took off this tree of life, they're going to live forever. And he didn't want Adam to live forever in his sinful state, you see? So he got him to guard the way of the tree of life. Can you imagine how wicked Adam would have been today as an eternal sinner by now, you know, 6,000 years later, you know, he's going to be, he would have gotten more and more and more and more wicked over time. And that shows me it doesn't matter. You know, you, a lot of older people, they start getting prideful with their age. But I'm telling you, all age is going to do for you if you don't get right with the Lord God all age is going to do for you is make you more and more and more wicked. And I know you've met them. I've met, I, I meet some extremely wicked older people. And they're the most wicked people, meanest, hatefulest people that I know. And I'm, I'm, And if you're young listening to this, go ahead and get right with God now. 
That way, when you get old, you've not got this years of evil built up into you. So this is like some older people, an older sense that I know you've lived a long time. And instead of letting the Word of God mold your spiritual character into a wise old man or a wise old woman that people is going to greatly admire and come to for advice and comfort and help, you have increasingly gotten more and more wicked and bitter and hateful. I mean, you people that's young, you're listening to this right now, you're maybe you're 30, 20 something years old, you are already kind of bitter and hateful. You're not going to get any less bitter and hateful. It's going to get worse and worse and worse with layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer of all this stuff around your heart. Imagine what it's going to be like when you get 65, 66, 67, 70, 80 years old. How many layers of all that stuff you're going to have over your heart unless you get right with God right now. You know, back before the flood... Back before the flood, they were living to be 900 and something years old. And these people weren't giving God a thought. They weren't retaining God in their knowledge. The earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Can you imagine the hideousness and the wickedness of a 900-year-old man that's lived hundreds and hundreds of years that hadn't given God a thought in several hundred years? Think about that for a minute. No wonder the wickedness of that is just so wicked that God would bring a flood to destroy every living thing. They were so wicked. And even uses that time period to describe what it's going to be like before the Lord comes back, as it were in the days of Noah. Well, you had 900-year-old wicked people. That's... Man, that's frightening to think about. I bet Noah, he he couldn't just go out in the streets. You see, you may have spent the last 40 years in church or in your religion or denomination, but have you been in love with the Lord or in love with the Scriptures? Or have you been in love with your religion, your religion of works that you got, your false religion? If you have simply been going through the motions and in the defense of your denomination and just in love with this religion you got, most likely over the last 40, 50 years, you've grown mean and hateful. And now you're 60, 65, 70 years old and you're mean and you're bitter and you're hateful and you may talk about the Lord sometimes, but it all really just goes back to your in defense of your denomination, your cult that you have. You know, maybe you've not lived 6,000 years, obviously, in a sinful state like Adam would have, but you've spent the last 40, 50 years, which is a long time for us, in a sense. In a sense, it's a long time. In a sense, it's a very short time. But you've spent the last 40, 50 years living for the world, living for your false religion, I imagine you've become very bitter and angry and depressed and you can't get over the past. And if you're an old saint, if you're a saint and an old one, then you have ate from the tree of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. But are you living all these many years that the Lord's blessed you with are you living those years as if you never got saved to begin with? If you're living these years as if you never got saved to begin with, then your gray hairs mean nothing. They mean absolutely nothing. And when somebody sees those gray, gray hairs on your head and you treat them like garbage and you're mean to them and you're hateful and you're bitter and you're supposed to be a not just old but an old saint, you're messing up big time. Proverbs 16, 31 says, The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. There's a condition on it, if it be found in the way of righteousness. Do those gray hairs you got mean anything? If they're not found in the way of righteousness, 
They mean nothing. You will notice people look up to and admire older people who act like older people. The ones who act like older people. You know, back when I was young, when you thought of a grandma, you thought of an older person. Now, the grandmas act like the grandmas and grandpas. They act like Eminem and Dr. Dre and Snoop D-O-double-G and all these people, these rappers. I mean, these people are like 50, 60 years old now. I think Dr. Dre is like 60 and then Eminem and uh, Snoop Dogg can get uh, a senior citizen's discount at Bojangles for coffee. I mean, it. They. They. That's your grandparents now. When my grandparents, I, I live with my grandparents growing up, and when my grandparents were fifty and sixty, they acted like old people. They didn't act younger than me. You see, you got these rappers that are old senior citizens now, yet they they act younger than I do. I remember growing up as a little kid and these these rappers were old enough to be my dad back then and now there's now I'm in my 30s and they act younger than I do you know something's wrong there and uh you've got all these 50 60 something year olds and they still they they I guess they just listen to the this bad music watch the bad movies get into all this childish things and they're just stunted. Their growth is stunted. They act like young children. Like, I don't know else to describe it. They act like young kids. Like when I go to work, almost everybody there has got 20, 25 years on me at least. And they act like you would expect that they acted when they were 20 something years old. They got gray hairs, but the gray hairs don't mean anything. You see, people look up to and admire older people who act like older people. When you are an older person you got, and you got gray hair and you're noticeably older and you act like a kid, that's a joke. And you wonder why they don't respect you. You wonder why they don't look up to you and admire you. Now, they still should respect you no matter what. They still should, you know, acknowledge that you're older and give you the respect. But if you're an older guy that doesn't even act like an older guy, don't expect them to respect you. When you won't put away childish things, don't expect to be treated like an elder. You see, I'm at work, I'm big on acknowledging age and seniority and things like that. I mean, if I'm working with somebody that's older than me, or, or even if I'm working with somebody that may be a little bit younger than me, but they got more seniority, I'll cater to that, you know, that status they got, and I'll let them decide when we're going to go to break. I'll let them decide. I'll let them uh, get the last break and leave before me. You know, I take all these things into consideration. And if you're close to retiring age and you've been at a job 30 years, you know, that's impressive and you deserve honor. You know, I'm big on acknowledging elders that rule well, especially the, you know, the much older ones who've been at it for a long time. I, I believe as a general rule, older people are wiser than younger people. And younger men shouldn't talk back to older men. I believe that. So, and, and that stuff you hear all the time. And that's obvious stuff. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I, I want to look at the other side of the coin that doesn't get talked about much. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody do a whole lesson or a message on this. Is how are you treating the younger people? How are you acting as an older person? Do those gray hairs mean anything? You see, in the South especially, you definitely hear the phrase often, don't be sassing your elders. Now, I hear that phrase all the time, but I don't know if I've ever heard anybody say, treat the younger men as brethren. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say that. It doesn't just say, be good to the elders. It says, treat the younger men as brethren. First Timothy 5, 1 and 2, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren. 
the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. You know, I hear respect your elders. Don't talk back to your elders. I don't hear anybody saying treat the younger men as brethren. You don't hear much talk about that. Many times the older crowd will use the phrase, don't talk back to your elders as a weapon to make them untouchable, to make it to where they can treat you like garbage and then you're just not allowed to say anything because they're older than you. I hear that all the time. Uh, that's the way it is in the South. I don't know about where you're at. But not even the older crowd is above a rebuke. And if you're one of these people that's got gray hairs and you're walking around like you just are great and everything, you know, you need a rebuke. In, Job, or in Joel 1, 2, and 3, I love this phrase. I almost called, titled it this. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What are you telling your children? He says, hear this, ye old men, and give ear. You know, listen up. Tell you your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What are you showing your children? What are you telling your children? What are your actions telling your children? Because they're going to tell their children. The way you act, all bitter and hateful and mean and like a big know-it-all, that's the way that they're going to act to their children. Big, hateful, and mean like a big know-it-all. Notice the phrase, hear this, ye old men. There are a lot of older men and women who think they are excluded from any type of correction or rebuke because of the fact that they are older. But they're, but they're not. I mean, even in 1 Timothy five nineteen and 20, it says, Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. So, they're not, a, they're not, you, you, they can get a rebuke. They're not above the rebuke. Nobody is. Nobody's above correction. Do you use your age to put yourself above correction and use it to treat younger people poorly? I know many people that do that. I know, I, I, I got, I even have somebody in mind right now that, they will treat everybody around them like garbage. And then if you say, why are you treating me that way? Why are you acting this way? They'll say, you can't talk back to me. I'm your elder. It doesn't work that way, you see. Do those gray hairs mean anything? Proverbs sixteen thirty one: The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. See, that white head is something to be admired if... You've spent years living in righteousness. There's nothing better than a, a older saint that's lived the Christian life for many years. But are you a grumpy old man? There's a lot of grumpy old men. Nobody wants to be around them. They're mean as the devil himself. Are you a grumpy old man? Or is your hoary head a crown of glory? Are there's nothing better than a sweet old lady that's nice, can give you advice, comforts you, that knows the Bible. Are you a sweet old lady or are you an old hag? Are you a grumpy old man? If that's what you are, if you're a grumpy old man or you're an old hag lady, that hoary head is not a crown of glory. You're just mean, you're just hateful, and you treat people really, really bad. Think about it. How do you treat people? You know, the, because you feel bad and you're hurting, that doesn't give you the right to treat people like garbage. You know, there's people that I see come to work every day that are in a lot of pain. And pain's something we got to deal with. All Everybody does, not just older people. Your pain shouldn't cause you to treat other people like trash. You know, I've seen older people that have built up this bitterness and this envy and this hate and other things over the years, years and years of this makes them treat people like they're nothing. 
You have to let God get rid of this bitterness and envy and hatred that you have. Or you're going to cause other people to be bitter and envy and, and hate people. I, I work with older men and they're so mad about the company, what the company's done to them, what their supervisors have done to them over the years. Now they're doing that to me. And if I don't watch it, I'll become just like them. Bitter, envious, hateful, mean. It says in Proverbs twenty twenty nine, the glory of young men is their strength and the beauty of old men is the gray head. So the beauty for the old men and women should have to do with the wisdom that comes out of their mouth and the hoary head should be a representation of the wisdom underneath it. But so often the words that I hear coming out of the mouth of the older generation is nothing more than tools of discouragement. Just such discouraging words that come out of your mouth. Think about your words. Have they been discouraging to a younger person? With the complaining and the murmuring and the hatred, you have a big mouth, but you never back it up. These like the, the older guys I work with, they got a huge, huge mouth, big mouth. They never back it up. You know, it's like the older they get, the more they say, well, I'm just going to say what's on my mind. Don't say what's on your mind. Keep it to yourself. You know, you shouldn't have the kind of mouth, you shouldn't have that kind of mouth that you have to back up because backing it up is no longer your strength. The glory of young men is their strength and the beauty of old men is the gray head. What's coming out of your mouth shouldn't be these these big words that you got to back up using your strength. They should be words that's going to help somebody else. You know, backing things up with the body of an old man, it's not going to work. Backing things up with the body is the young man, should be the young man's strength. Now, we're not going to get into this, but the young men now, it's like they want to tell you that they want to act like they got all this wisdom and they've been lazy their whole life, so they don't have the strength of a young man. And then the old man, they, they should have all this wisdom, but yet they want to act like they got the strength of a young man and say all these tough words and that when it comes right down to it, their, their words don't help anybody. So the glory of young men is their strength. The beauty of old men is the gray head. So many times at work, I see the older men, you know, they're bashing and harassing and verbally attacking and humiliating, outright humiliating the young men with their words. Their hair has turned white, but their mind stayed the same as it was in the 60s and the 70s and in the 80s, you know, what what happened? What have you been doing? It's like many times, I, I, you know, I'm in the break room, I'm reading my Bible, I don't talk very much at all, very little, if ever, do I talk, but I, I can't help but hear the stuff they're saying, and it's like, and I think to myself, they're almost retiring age, just about everybody here is retiring age, and yet they're talking like they're in their 20s, and I think to myself, what have they been doing the last 30 years to never have grown beyond this childlike mind that they've got. It's not enough intake of the Word of God. Even the ones that claim to be Christians, there's there's been little to none intake of the Word of God in their life whatsoever. They've spent even if they've went to church, they may have heard a couple verses that the you know the pastor will open it up. He'll say, "Turn to verse such and such." He'll read one verse and then he'll just talk with them. The rest of the time, there's been no intake of the word of God. The only time they got their Bibles when they're at church and they probably don't even bring it. The only Bible they touch is the one in the pew and they just open it so that they don't look silly compared to everybody else with this open Bible. But when it comes to the Bible through the week, they don't care about the Bible through the week. You've spent the last 30 or 40 years doing absolutely nothing but griping, complaining, being bitter and hateful. And you're causing other people to grow up and be complaining, bitter, envying, and hateful. So not enough intake of the Word of God throughout their life. So their crown of glory is not a crown of glory, it's a crown of bitterness. And this world, this life will make you so bitter because people are so mean. You got to get the Word of God in you or you are going to be a bitter, hateful old man. If you're an old man, your strength should be in wisdom 
and guidance and helping somebody with words that comes out of your mouth that God's given you. Instead, we can't really even call that a mouth on your face. It's simply a hole. You got a hole in your face where your ego seeps out. And you're so puffed up because, you know, you've been around, you've seen many things, you've done a lot of stuff, yet you do little to help anybody. Your words hurt people. You know, you treat the younger men as brethren. You know, respect your youngers. We shouldn't just respect you. You should respect the youngers, you see. You know, I feel like I can talk about this now because, you know, I've had this thought on my mind for a long time. But now I'm not that old. I'm, I mean, I'm not that young, but I'm not that old. So I'm kind of in the middle. So there have been times where I'm having a nice conversation with an older guy and he's talking about the Bible and I'll start talking about the Bible. This has happened so many times and he or she will say, I'm 70 years old. You don't, you think I don't know that? And they say it in a way where it's like, they're mad because I told them something they didn't know, but they really didn't know it. And they're so ashamed that they didn't know it. And you can't even have a conversation with them about the Bible because they're so prideful and they think just because somebody's younger, they can't learn anything from that person. Well, if you've spent 30 and 40 years not in the Bible, you I don't, just because you grow a year older, you're not going to know more Bible in that from that from the past year if you never read it. You see, you know, I've talked to I'm thinking of a particular person even that's 70 something years old and you know they don't like my beliefs on the bible you know they don't believe eternal security they don't believe salvation by grace through faith without works and they think that since they're so much older than me when i tell them that salvation is by grace through faith without works they think well i'm 70 something years old you're 30 something years old you don't know more than me well the thing is you haven't spent any time in the bible so somebody say uh Say a 12-year-old gets saved and spends a whole year in the Bible. I mean, just every day, just soaking himself in the Word of God. By the time he's 13, he's going to know more Bible than you at 70-something years old because you have may have opened it here, there, here, some, and there, some, the past 40 or 50 years. The 13-year-old is going to know more Bible than you, and he's going to be most likely wiser than you. You know, somebody that's young, that spends a lot of time in the Bible, spends a lot of time in preaching, spends a lot of time with the Lord, he's going to be wiser than a 70-something-year-old man who lives for himself and spends all of his time thinking about the past and being bitter and complaining. The younger man's going to be wiser. He's going to have more of a crown of glory on his head than you do. You see... You may be 70 or 80 years old, but there was a lot of 900-year-olds who didn't have enough sense to get out of the rain, and they didn't board Noah's Ark. I mean, they had a lot of years, but all them years didn't make them no wiser, didn't make them no better, because they spent it for themselves, they spent it for the world. And I see, you know, I see the, the criticizing and the harassing and the bashing and the it's really sickening when I see the older guys saying, you know, you younger generation, you're so ungrateful and lazy and pathetic and you you, you don't have it nowhere near as bad as I had it. Well, good for you, man. But how is that going to help the younger generation? You go around telling them that. You're just teaching them to talk like a egomaniac narcissist type. You know, you just brag. All I hear when you say that is, is just bragging. You know, don't you know your dad could say the same thing about you and then his dad say the same thing about him and you could just follow that line all the way back to Adam. I mean, look at the line of Christ and all them daddies in there. They messed up until you get to Jesus Christ and you ain't Jesus Christ, so you ain't perfect yourself. And when you talk like that, you're saying all this stuff, but all I hear is, uh, I'm so full of myself, and I think I'm so much better than you. That's all I hear when you say that. It it does nothing for me. It does nothing for any 
uh, the people that I see, the younger guys at work, that's just really young, like 19 and 20, when they talk to them like that, it, it does nothing for anybody. And if you had it so, if listen to this too. Think about this for a minute. Older people, notoriously known for talking about how bad they had it growing up. And maybe they did. I don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe they had it really hard growing up. And if, but if, listen to this, if you had it so hard growing up in your day, where is your character? I mean, I talk to these older people and it's like they have zero character and they have no humbleness. You know, you may come to work every day and you see, I mean, it, it, I mean, there's so, at work, where I go to work every day, there's sodomites that work there. They work every day. You know, just because you're 70 or something years old and you've worked every day, it doesn't mean anything. There's sodomites that go to work every day. The average lost man will love his family enough to get up and go to work every day. You know, that's hard. That's It's hard to get up and go to work every day. So you've spent, you're an older person, you've spent all this time going to work every day. If you had it so hard... Where is your humbleness? If you had it so hard growing up as a little kid, you were poor, your parents didn't have a lot of money, maybe didn't even have sometimes enough money to have food on the table, where's your character? Where's your humbleness? You know, hard times make good men. Did you really have it as hard as you're saying? Because your character and your pride, it doesn't show that you had hard times. Hard times make humble men. You know, hard times make men that appreciate things. You appreciate nothing. So much the older generation I see, they gripe and they complain and they're picky. Why are you so picky? If you grew up not knowing if you would have food on the table that night and somebody gives you a steak or a hamburger and you snarl your nose at it and push it back, what's wrong with you? What happened? You know, we'll have these dinners at work sometimes and we'll have like, They'll, they'll even have steak sometimes, and they're like, this steak is tough. This steak ain't, it's not how I like it. And I'm like, it's steak. It's good. Eat it. It's like, I don't care how the steak is. You're giving me a free steak, I'm going to eat it. I don't care if it's a little cold. I don't care if it's tough or not well done enough, not well done at all. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to be happy about it. But you got that older generation, all they did was complain about the steak. What's wrong with you? You're going to complain about steak, but yet you're going to tell me stories about how hard you had it growing up? Something ain't not enough. Either you're lying about having it hard growing up, or you've just gotten to be spoiled rotten. But here are some questions to ask yourself when you are bragging about your past to the younger men. And that's really the advice I get from older men is nothing more than them bragging about their past and basically telling me how much tougher they are than me, how much harder they had it than me, and basically talking to me like I'm a nobody and that I'm nothing and that I'm privileged and I've got everything I want. That's that's all I hear. That's all I'm hearing. Here's some questions to ask yourself when you're bragging about your past to the younger men. In Job 26, 2 through 4, it says, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? You know, the younger guys that don't got no wisdom, how have you counseled him that has no wisdom? How hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? And whose spirit came from thee? What spirit is coming from you? When you're saying all this mean and hateful stuff. And I'm, I'm about to utter what might sound like blasphemy to the older generation. But old people are not always right. And just because you're old, just because you're 40 and 50 years older than this 19 year old over here. It, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be situations where he's right and you're wrong. And I've seen it many times at work. 
Like the situation will have nothing to do with me. And there is a, a dispute or argument going on between a, like a 19 year old kid and a 60 something year old man. And the younger guy's right and the older guy's wrong. And in first Kings 13, that young prophet, there's a young prophet and he just had a great victory over against King Jeroboam. And he really preached a good message. He did what the Lord wanted him to do. He was running his race and the Lord told him plainly when he left there, you know, don't eat or drink water in that place. That was what he was supposed, not supposed to do. But yet here comes an old prophet to contradict the word of the Lord, which a good portion of the older generation, you start talking to them, everything that they're going to tell you is a contradiction to the word of God because they don't read the word of God. And I just want to read this story to you to give you an illustration. You may be old, but you're not always right. And you can be a huge stumbling block to the younger crowd when you go against the Bible. First Kings 13, 11, it says, Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father, and their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode their own, and, he, and went after the man of God. So the young, the old man of God's going after the young man of God and found him sitting under an oak, just minding his own business. <clears throat> and, you know, if that was today, you know, the, the old man would be saying, what's he doing sitting down? This younger generation, they're so lazy. And it says, and he said unto him, art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. Now listen to this. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. Now, if that was the way I'd see old people today, he'd be like, don't you talk back to me. Don't you talk back to your elders like that. Don't you think I know more than you? I'm 70. I'm 80 years old. You don't know more than me. Don't you tell me you're not coming home with me. I'm your elder. You got to treat me with respect. They want you to, to treat them with more respect than what you treat God. Like, they want to they want to use their age to make you go against the word of god even not ever not all of them there's great old people out there i'm talking to these old people that think they're just so great and it said he said verse 17 for it was said to me by the word of the lord thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest so he's trying to go by the word of god he told him no, but then it says, and he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. You see, he says, well, I'm a prophet also. And this angel spake to me, you know, and that's the way a lot of the old generation act. They're like, I've got this that you don't have because I'm older. And I know more than you because I'm older. And you need to listen to me because I'm older. No, you need to listen to the word of God. And if, uh, and if, they have, if the older person has, has used all these years of his life and soaked himself on the word of God, he's going to agree with the word of God and he's going to have a crown of glory on his head. But this guy obviously don't. But look what happened. So he went back with him. He gave in. He listened to the older man. He, Maybe he thought, well, this guy's older. He's an old prophet. I look up to him. He's not steering me the wrong way. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass, as they said at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread, and drunk water in this place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass, to wit, for the prophet whom he had brought back, 
And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, the lion also stood by the carcass. So since the young man listened to the old man, he ends up dead, killed by a lion. The old man was wrong. The younger man ended up dead for doing what the old prophet said. And so many times the things that come out of your mouth as an old man do not match up with the scriptures and the spirit that came from you is the spirit like a diatrophies or somebody who loves to have the preeminence. The older generation will many times put so much energy in letting you know how worthless you are and how right they are. But every finger that they point at the young men, they usually got a four fingers pointed right back at them. You know, you, you say stuff to the younger guys. I hear them say stuff like this to the younger guys at work all the time. And they say, your wife runs you. Your wife, you know, your your wife just runs you. you. She runs your house. Why do you let your wife run your house? And they say all this type of stuff. But listen, man, their wives are your daughters. What happened there? You see, you got another, you got a finger pointed right back at you. You know, instead of pointing the fingers all the time, give some advice. Instead of pointing fingers, get them fingers thumbing through your Bible. And give something to the younger generation that can help them. Or they'll say stuff like, well, when I was a boy, we would work. Y'all are lazy. Y'all are terrible. Y'all are blankety blank blank. You're so prideful. You help no one with your pride. And you know who has a problem with pride? Newbies, rookies, babes, the devil. You see, when Paul is given qualifications for the office of a bishop, he says, not a novice, not a new guy, not a newbie, not a novice lest being lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Quit bragging, quit being so prideful, start giving wisdom. You know, you grew up in harder times, right? Why are you so picky? You're putting your nose up at a nice meal, so you're really not that hungry. You know, my wife will many times say, um, I'm sorry, the food isn't that good today. I'm like, why are you sorry? It's good, it's warm, it's food, you can eat it. You know, you can make, I tell her, you can make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I'll take it. Just... And I tell her, if you don't even feel like making me a peanut butter sandwich, I'll go get me an Uncrustable out of the fridge. I'll just sneak one of my daughter's Uncrustables out of there and eat it. And it'll still be good. Why are you so picky? If you can't eat certain foods, I mean, if you can't eat the food that your wife put on the table, you're not hungry. You're picky. In Hebrews 5, 11 through 14, it says, Of whom... We have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you, older man, you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as one, such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. That's what you act like, a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, when it comes to the scriptures, you're like some of these older men at work that I work with. They won't eat that strong meat. They wouldn't take that steak. They were too good for that steak. And you haven't exercised your senses. You just exercised your mouth telling people off. You've exercised running down by running down your neighbor, jabbering your jaws, criticizing everything and everybody because it isn't like how it was when you was a boy. And you ignore the fact that the world will continue to get worse and worse, Second Timothy 3.13. And evil men seducers are wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. So what are you doing to bring this, the younger generation to God? Reviling them isn't helping them. You see... Now, maybe you're older and you spent all these years not living for the Lord. You can start now. You see, it's more about how you finish. 
2 Timothy 4, 7, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. You know, I don't know how old you are, but the greatest thing you can do is finish your course. You can't run as fast as you used to. Obviously, you can't do as much as you used to, but it's not about finishing first. It's about finishing. You know, you're ahead of the younger guys, but that's because you started first. Since you're ahead, you could even wait for them to catch up and start giving them advice and encouragement on making it as far as you've made it in the race. You know, don't spend your time telling them how harder the race used to be. You know, instead of giving them advice, you're spending all your time telling them that the race used to be so much harder. And you got it so easy. So don't feel good about anything that you accomplished for the Lord because you had it easy doing it. That's basically what you're saying. You know, don't spend all your time talking about how you were running the race without shoes on on gravel roads. Well, why are you not running anymore? Some of you have veered off to the sidelines and you have become a spectator. And instead of sp finishing the race, you're sitting in judgment on the younger generation who are running the race. Maybe you think you've ran long enough, but if you're alive... The course isn't finished. You may run it at a slower pace now, but you still run. Your bitterness toward the younger generation, mixed with never putting the Word of God into yourself, has made you a very mean old grouch or a very mean old hag. And if you're old, your body is getting ready to go back to the dust. So you need to wipe the dust off your Bible and let the words get in you and make you a sweet old lady and a sweet old saint for the Lord. No offense, but your them gray hairs for a lot of you, they don't mean anything.